Welcome, one and all. I can say that this time around. Hmm. Yesterday, we had a look through the absolute shite that is smeared on the walls of Steam. Today, we look at the shining brilliance that I played this year. This year was a hard one. I played more games this year than I've played my whole life. My gaming career, if you will, started around 2002, when I was five. Playing Crazy Taxi, Apes Odyssey, Spyro. I've had what is calculating up to be 16 years in gaming. And this year, it has reinvigorated my love of gaming. This year, I've been given near 500 games. I have bought about 20 games this year. I have had more than enough games to play, and I haven't had the time to play all of them. One of my loves of gaming came back to me this year. A few, actually, and I've not been able to play them beyond the first couple hours. I've fallen to the curse of being a reviewer. Sure, some of these games I wouldn't complete or put hundreds of hours into my playtimer, but that's because I have other things to go do. So, shall we begin? I will quickly note that today we're opening with a couple honourable mentions as I started doing last year, because these are what couldn't fit onto the list as I restricted it down to 10 games this year. Well, that and I don't think they deserve the highest accolades just yet. Number one. Psychonauts and Brutal Legend take a joint place here because they are the reason I love gaming. They are what the PS2 was made for. Stupid, fun, colourful games in a world that couldn't be real, yet somehow feels realistic in a weird way. Double Fine is what every studio should aspire to be. A well-refined team with a madman at the helm of it all. Tim Schafer is what sex is if sex were a man. You couldn't find a better genius in gaming right now that has a game that I'm excited about. Here in Please Knock On My Door, you play a game about being a lonely depressive that has trouble talking to his family. So I've never related more to a character in my life. It is not iconic to have a baseball cap that has never been seen before. Watch Dogs 2 will be the icon for people to see that games can be bad the first time round, but followed up by an amazing second go at it. Since last year, when I said about Watch Dogs 2, this is in my top 5 open world games of all time. I can now say it has gone higher. Possibly one of the greatest examples of a dark story with a bright world. It is up there on the list with Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and Saints Row 2. And that is a high accolade for a game. I lesbians it. So, shall we begin? 10. 
I could not work out where to put Sam Airport on this list. It was higher. Much, much higher. But I didn't feel right with it being third without questioning it. I had to qualify that number by saying I'd played more of this than anything else on Steam this year. But if we did it that way, Mad Max would be my game of the year and we don't want that. Sim Airport is to management games what Richard Hammond is to a car crash. They just seem to go together in a weird way that you can't separate. It has taken what Prison Architect had going for it. Still does, but it it's fully released and all that gubbins, so they're done with it. Semi Airport has taken that and run with it. And for the other part, I'd have to tell you a bit of a story. There was a TV show on when I was younger, much, much younger, about mm, five. Airline, it was on ITV. That's not important, but I thought I should say. What is important is that from that moment of seeing an airline in shambles and thinking, I know how to fix that. Anyone looking to get on flight 432 will now have to go to terminal 69. That is flight 432, now at terminal 69. I can't fix that. Nine. A time-bending XCOM-style game set in a futuristic East Germany. Yep, that sums up All Walls Must Fall, a truly beautiful game for what would be a horrific time for many. All Walls Must Fall is a perfect example of Go do something. Why? Because it's fun to walk into a club and kill a dude. A Hitman style game where the fun comes from your own fucked up mind and desire to advance. The couple of hours that I have played with All Walls Must Fall has given me a feeling the game is almost done. They are currently, as of writing, on Alpha 5. Seemingly no other game right now knows the stages of Alpha, Beta and release. The beautiful people in Germany at In Between Games are creating something I for one will remember for years to come. I'm going to add a quick addendum to the end of this one, and maybe one later. I've played what is listed as an XCOM game, however it's a third person shooter, and if you take out the name XCOM and the XCOM bet, the mechanics, You'd think it's just another alien shooter set in the 60s. It's a good game, but nothing stood out to me to say, Yeah, this is an XCOM game that I know of. All Walls Must Fall doesn't feel like that XCOM game that I played. I still feel like saying, yes, the game is much to the XCOM I know of, but have never played. It didn't bring down All Walls Must Fall. I mean, before writing my script for this year, I played both for at least an hour, and there's a bit of a difference between 
the XCOM inspired game and the XCOM third person shooter. I like the XCOM inspired game more? Yeah. Eight. What can I say about a game that makes me swear as much as Gordon Ramsay? I guess I could say that I despise cooking. Because I do. I can't cook because something in the back of my head tells me that I won't make it like my dad. My dad, whom for many years worked in a hotel as a chef. My sister, last time I checked, is doing a culinary course to go down the same path. I guess what I'm saying is I'm stressed by being in a kitchen. So me in that situation with people who want things made perfectly in that moment. Uh, I can't explain why I hate cooking, but that lack of ability to explain and the hair that I'm pulling out from it explains why I love Cook Serve Delicious too. When a game feels right, that is the moment. Having a game that gives you the same feeling you get in real life is as good as games can get. I'll also add a quick note here about playing before release. The pre-release build was, yes, missing a couple features, yes, made me get a handle on the game, but it wasn't balanced. My review of Cook Serve Delicious 2, which is on the pre-release game, which is over on the website, cheap plug, was baked in negativity at 3.50 for 20 minutes. That should be updated at some point to reflect what I feel about playing. With a couple patches that fix the game's balance issues. Seven. I have already stated my affection for PlayStation 2 games because they are what I grew up with. They were pretty colourful because that's what distinguished them from what would later be the PlayStation 3's standard of grey and boring. I say that because Hypernova Escape from Hidea is one of the most colourful games I played all year. I love a game that can take itself out of the crowded mess that is grey and boring on Steam and PS4 right now and be a shining light. Oh, also it's a real-time strategy, so if you care for that kind of game, you'll like it. Maybe not the most refined game, but I love every moment that I've had with it. The middle of the tech tree is a little daunting because I'm getting attacked by every side, and I don't know where to go. Maybe if I could have been able to focus on that and understand what was going on and what I had to do, I'd have placed it higher and maybe played it a bit more, but I don't have all the time in the world. Yay. Still a good game though. Six. Another wonderful showing of colour being used within itself, but still displacing itself outside of the crowd. 
Dead Cells is the first Metroidvania I have ever played, and it is what every first game should be in a genre, giving me more games to look forward to. With Dead Cells, I want to go and play Symphony of the Night or Samus Returns, two games that I've heard are pretty good. This is the type of game that I spoke about yesterday, where you should want to play another round instead of wasting your time. Every moment playing Dead Cells gave me the feeling of, oh, I've been playing for an hour. I should stop soon. Three hours later. I just want to explore more. And more. I just want to be able to find the boss and beat the boss at the end of the level, but I keep dying long before I can even get that to happen. I've gotten close. About half of his health down, but I was on my second life, and three quarters of my life happened to be depleted. So... yeah, I'm dead. Five. I think I've fallen into a little groove of colourful and interesting games I enjoyed this year. Serial Cleaner is one of those games you can actually tell your parents it doesn't have guns or anything like that. I mean, sure, there's a lot of blood. Like, a lot of blood. And a couple cops that'll try to beat you like you're a different ethnicity on the side of the highway. But you play as a man I labelled as Bob. Bob is a cleaner for the Mafia. Bob just wants to make ends meet and provide for his mother. See? Innocent. If you look past the part where he is cleaning up and eventually covering up murders for the Mafia. I find the defendant guilty. Yay! That's the good one. Right? Four. What can I say about a reboot of a series I have said in the past is the reason I love shooters, but hate modern bullshit. Doom has done the impossible. It's a modern shooter without any of the modern shooter bullshit. Microtransactions and loot boxes are now on that list of bullshit. Doom is Doom. Nothing comes close to that feeling you get from playing a Doom game. You just feel like an amazing space superhero with guns. Deadpool, but in space. The story is... who cares? I just want to switch off and shoot some massive and horrific monsters. I don't care about the Meryl Streep ghost thing doing whatever it's doing to the plot. I don't know what Samuel Hayden is doing with Siri. Doom is just about running and punching the shit out of a bag of blood. Well, that went places. Three. Have you ever wanted to be the unrelenting evil that is destroying the whole world, but you are still someone that doesn't want to be an EA employee? Boy, do I have a game for you! Dungeons 3 is what Dungeon Keeper would be if EA didn't have their hands on it. Sure, a couple of years ago, Dungeon Keeper was a game you could play on your phone. I think you know where I'm going with this one. EA, the insipid arseholes that they are, 
made you wait a day to dig something out that took 10 seconds to do in the 90s. The only thing that has slowed down that much in that time is Bill Cosby's career. Dungeons 3 has something I think not many games can do. The dialogue between characters and the voiceover is good. I know something like Watch Dogs 2 is funny in a way, but that's for relationships, that's a script that is worked out. Whereas Dungeons 3 makes references to other media and doesn't make it sound like the timing is off or any of the other basic YouTube. Oh look, I'm a vlog channel making references to the same thing 30,000 times. Stupid. They hired a voice actor that can do comedy and do it well. I praised Dungeons 3 in the review on the website for being a full game on release. And I'll say it now, a lot of other people agree. This is one of the most popular indies I played all year. And I played it before release. Saying that will never get old. Just go play it now. Play all these games, they're some of the greatest games to be released this year. Okay, some weren't released this year, but... I only got round to playing them this year. Two. Speaking of being old and past the time of allotment, but still being able to stand up to the big boys. Oh yeah, me. Dishonored. I never got round to playing it upon release. I didn't even know it was out until about three years after its release. Even then I didn't pick it up because I didn't know much about it. I completed Dishonored this year. A perfect game by any stretch of the imagination, it is not. That includes a politician's. Something that it had going for it was... It kept me in the world. I felt what Corvo, the speechless wonder he is, was going through. I felt the darkness of the world changing me and my decisions. As well as a super stealth game, Dishonored is a fantastic adventure game. You can walk in and stab 15 people, shoot a further six, or you could do what I do and walk along the rooftops and be stealthy. Fall over your own feet, trigger a trap, be shot by the 13 guards that have descended down on your position, and die. I used a lot of quick saves. As much as I hate anything even slightly high fantasy, I love the crazy world that was built around Corvo, from the dreamscape moments to the disgusting and downright disturbingly real world moments. Lady Boyle's party is a party I've been to in real life. All the back streets in Dunwall are streets I have walked down in real life. I can't just say I was enthralled in the world because it wasn't just that. After editing, I'd boot up the PlayStation 4 and play a level while the video was exporting. I would spend a couple hours over the weekend and even miss sleep. A solid 16 hours at the minimum. I did mention I was a bit sh**. Well, what could be number one? The game I'd say was the best and I got the most out of. One. When I first opened Deus Ex Mankind Divided, I 
played an hour or two and left it. I didn't enjoy the first hour because I'd seen it before. I would do the same as I have done multiple times with The Witcher 3. That alone is enough to say, yep, here's a high accolade in my books. If I were to write a list of my top 100 games of all time, The Witcher 3 is easily in the top 20. Top 5, possibly. So, possibly a good reason to put Deus Ex Mankind Divided on the top of the list this year. Another reason to have Deus Ex Mankind Divided at the top this year is because once I concluded the story, I debated going back to the start straight away and starting again. Not many games make me think, hmm, should I go back to the very beginning again and do this story all over again? Playing Deus Ex felt like I was playing a futuristic detective drama. Not a dystopian sci-fi RPG. I felt involved. The decisions felt like they were worth more than a politician's promise. And I fucking love the mission where you have to go to the woman's apartment. I went into that apartment at the beginning of the game and I had questions. My questions were answered by the end. Everything felt like it was designed to be there and not in a bad way. Little hidden parts of the map had story and rewards for being there. Everything felt just so. No padding, no horrendous displays of we need to keep you in the game. I played it for a little over what would be average, and I don't feel like it overstayed its welcome. I will note I had trepidation putting Deus Ex Mankind Divided so high on the list because the microtransactions. However, I played the game and hardly bought anything in game. I played a slow stealth game the way it is meant to be played. Also, I know from one of the people on the dev team, via Jim Sterling, that Square Enix forced the people over at, and I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, Adios, Adios, Montreal, to implement the microtransactions last minute. For an open world game, it doesn't feature anything that made the game feel bloated. A linear narrative told in an open world? Personally, and clearly, I thought Deus Ex Mankind Divided deserved such a high place. I've put a lot of thought into this and I think I'm right. I, I hope I'm right. Another year, another awards show wrapped up. It's been a long year, not just for worrying about games being destroyed, but also the world by one idiot who thinks firing rockets at Japan is a good idea, and another idiot who either doesn't know how to spell coffee, or is just a plain imbecile. Games, as I said yesterday, may be going under further scrutiny by authorities, which is a good thing. Having a body of people made up of executives who want to free up the market to let any old shite in will kill the future of games. Having a bar of entry is what we need, and not just a hundred dollar bar. I'm hoping for more games to be played next year, more excellent games that made me want to play more and more, like this list, not the piles of wank that feature microtransactions and loot boxes, like yesterday. 
Here's a fun fact that no one cares about. At the time of recording, I have been handed 482 game keys since January 27th this past year. 71 of those came in November. If I add the games that I bought this year, I'm looking at 499 games to play in just under 12 months. At some point, I need to go through my Steam library and my PS4 games and know if I've made a video or not, or if I've reviewed it or not. This year has been a whirlwind of games. I don't think I'll be stopping anytime soon.